What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very, very exciting episode. It's moving day, but probably not the type of moving you're thinking about. We're taking our small seedlings and moving them into bigger containers. That's right. It's up potting day. Let's go. So like I said, it's up potting day. I am so excited about this day because it's always a day that I look forward to. You know, seed starting is, is great. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, there is a time when you kind of have to move them from their kind of diaper stage into their pull-up stage. These are kind of your pull-ups. You know, these are kind of training them to get into the garden. It's a nice move because they, they grow so much quicker. They're so much less stressed. And... Um, and you know, if you have the space to do it, they'll always appreciate it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna move them into four inch containers. The four inch containers are gonna give them ample, ample space. Right now they're in a one and a half inch by one and a half inch cell. So like three square inches. These are four inches by four inches. So these are 16 square inches. This is going to give you so much more space uh, that we're gonna be able to keep them in here for another two or three weeks. Now you might be asking yourself, Luke, well, why on earth would you keep them in there for another two or three weeks if you can pretty much plant outdoors in two or three weeks. And that's because they're starting to show some signs of stress. I would much rather take the time to move them in a pot, even if they're not gonna use all of this space, but give them the space that they can use if they need it, rather than keep them confined in a space that's too small. I think it's a big uh, mistake that I see a lot of people making is they just say, well, if I can just hold out, if I can just hold out for another week, I'll be planting in the garden anyways, might as well just let them stay here and not invest the time and money into containers and soil and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a big mistake because once they get stressed, it's very difficult to, uh, to alleviate that stress. And I already am starting to see some signs of stress. You can start to see some curling of leaves or some yellowing of leaves. Prime example here, you can see I've got uh, some, of the new, some of the oldest leaves that, ever were, that were ever formed are are starting to show some signs of yellowing. Now the new growth is great, it's all nice and green, it's, it's a very healthy seedling by all means, but it is showing some signs of stress. That yellowing is the first signs that, uh, that it needs something. And as soon as I pulled it out, I saw immediately what it needed, and it just needed, it just needed more space. So I'm pretty much just rocking and rolling with this right now. I got about, maybe about half of the tray already finished, and all I'm going to do is take my four inch pot, take a little bit of my mix here, put just a little bit in the bottom, just enough to kind of, just enough to kind of conceal the, the holes in the bottom of the pot and stuff. You just don't want your plants to be right on the bottom, but you do want to bury them a little bit deeper than they already are because tomatoes will form roots all along the stem. So you'll have a stronger, healthier plant in the end. This is the Polish linguisa. It looks super sickly. It's actually quite healthy. They just look sickly because that's what the genetics look like in this variety. And, it, and that's what I was saying. You know, when you get all these different varieties, you learn about how they look based on, you know, their, their, uh, their health and their vigor. And this one here actually is, is quite stress-free, but it looks like it's about ready to keel over. That's just the genetics of the Polish linguisa, which is really cool. And you just stick it in the pot there like that. And then I just backfill around the corners there, around the edges. Kind of pack it in with my fingers. I want to get rid of all those air gaps because all that stuff will settle. And you don't want a pot half full. You want a pot that's actually full. So give it a good pack in and then a tap to settle everything down. And that one's good. So that one is ready to go. So rather than finish up all the tomatoes and then move over to some cold weather crops, I'm just gonna stop what I'm doing for these for now. I'll move over to some cold weather crops, show you what those look like, and then I'll finish them off, off and I'll finish them up off camera, and then we'll do a closing. Cause I was just looking at these and I figured, you know what, I, I can't wait. These are looking way too pretty. Take a look at these. Look at how, look how pretty those plants look. Look at that. I mean, we're talking just incredible healthy plants. So 
we're gonna get these moved into some bigger containers because they could definitely use it as well. So we're gonna do the same exact thing, only we're not going to bury them as deep as the tomatoes because they won't put, they won't set down roots all along the stem. So all we're going to do is just pretty much fill them up to soil what, right up to the level that they were originally without burying too much of the crown. This is a Napa cabbage, looks just so healthy. Check that plant out, look at that. <laughs> that looks super good. I'll tell you what, that's gonna appreciate the move big time. So anyways, I'm gonna get uh, one of these other kale here. I wanna show you the kale. The kale just looks absolutely incredible as well. This is a lacinato, otherwise known as a dinosaur kale. Really love this variety for making kale chips, smoothies, juices, salads. It's so versatile, lasts all season long, takes the heat, takes the cold, almost overwinters without any protection at all. It's just such an awesome, awesome variety. We grow it every single year. But look at this one. Check this out. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at that. And that's just a three week old plant. Absolutely beautiful. I love when they get, they're really stocky and they're not super laggy. They're not stretching for light. You can just tell that they're healthy. These have done really well. So I'm gonna finish up the rest of these plants here. I've got some herbs that I've got to do as well. I've got a few herbs that I've got to do. I've got the, uh, the cold weather crops. Here, I'll show you an herb really quick too. I wanna to show you the rosemary. The rosemary, a lot of people wanted to see what it looked like because I densely sowed the seeds and I never thinned them. A lot of people thought that I'd be killing the plants, but I'm not. And that's because they, they can grow like that. So you can see here, we've got the rosemary and the sage. It's a little washed out from how bright the grow lights are, but you can see them there. And all we're going to do is the exact same thing. Take our pot, fill in the soil. You don't want to bury these super deep. We're just going to take the whole plug here. So it's crazy. So we're going to take the whole plug, just grab it by the foliage, gently tug, and they come right out. No damage done. You can see there, look at that beautiful root system. Beautiful focus there, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful root system. I just wanna make a final note too, as you check out how beautiful the rosemary looks. You know, a lot of people ask me, Luke, when you're using your seeds, you know, can I expect, you know, the, the germination rate and the quality to be that of any other seed supplier because the cost is only 99 cents. And I always say we never, ever, ever sacrifice on quality or quantity of seeds. We just save money in other areas. For instance, we don't have a catalog, so we don't really uh, send out a catalog. We don't do a whole lot of advertising. You know, we're pretty bare bones because we really realize that the quality and consistency of quality needs to be there with the seed because that's really all that you care about. The end consumer cares about the quality of seeds, not how the catalog looks, not if there is a catalog, or not if there's ads showing up on their sidebars telling them that, you know, hey, we have seeds for sale because the bottom line is the fact that this is all you're worried about. And that's all, worry, that's all we're worried about as well. So yes, you're gonna get the same quality of seeds that you would anywhere else. And also, there's a special promotion going on right now for anyone interested that wants to get their hands on some seeds. We sell over 450 different varieties of seeds. Almost all of these came from mmigardener.com, about 99% of them actually came from mmigardener.com. You can get all these seeds over there for actually uh, 85 cents a pack right now because you're using the code SPRINGTIME15. That's S-P-R-I-N-G-T-I-M-E-1-5. All one, all one word, SPRINGTIME15, and that's gonna give you 15% off your seeds. It's a special little promo that we're doing on all of our seeds store-wide, just our seeds, and you're gonna be able to save some money because we really want people to experience the quality that we're putting out there's still a ton of time to start your seeds, even if you haven't started them, even if you haven't even bought them yet, or even if you haven't even thought about putting in a garden yet, we just wanted to give you every single reason to try our seeds, really give them a try, because I'm telling you what, look, look, look at that. Look at how beautiful that looks. Absolutely incredible. I mean, we're talking just gorgeous rosemary. That this was, this was 99 cents at full price, and this right here would cost you five bucks for this single start, 
and we only used about a tenth of the packet of seeds. I mean, it's just a no-brainer. So I really hope you guys check it out, migardener.com. You can get all your seeds there. Shipping is super affordable. It only starts at, it starts at 250 and it's based on weight, so you can get a ton of seeds for 250. It's really, really a great deal. But we just wanna help gardeners out all around the world, so we ship internationally as well. And that's my little spiel. I don't typically talk about migardener.com seeds a lot. A lot of people ask about it, but I don't like to sell stuff on here because this is information-based, not, uh, not, I don't wanna feel like I'm pushing products on you guys, but I think it's really important this time of year to get your hands on some good quality seeds because good quality seeds makes all the difference when it comes to having a successful garden. So we got everything all finished up. It looks absolutely incredible. We got the tomatoes, we got the peppers, the cold weather crops, the herbs, the onions I did not have to transplant, and then we had some that did not need to be transplanted just because of their age. They were just newly started starts, so they don't have to be transplanted yet. We did run out of space. We used up every square inch of these tables, not as efficiently as I'd like, which I'll get into, but uh, we actually had to put one flat right there. And those are just some more, uh, some more herbs and things that were younger, but they can handle lower light. They don't need to be under these, these super strong grow lights. They'll be more than fine in that, uh, in that little grow light system right over there. They'll be totally fine. So I had to throw them over there because I ran out of space. And the reason why I ran out of space is because these flats here, <laughs> these flats here were not the same size. And this is a lesson that I wanna let everyone know about is that know what you buy when you buy them and know if they're compatible when you buy them. You see, these flat, these cells here are not known, these are not compatible with a 1020, uh, 1020 flat. This right here is a 1020 flat, 10 inches by 20 inches. These are four inches, these are four inches wide and so if you do the math here, 10 inches, I would need another two inches on the side there to, uh, to make up for that third pot. And that's why there's a lot of extra room and there's probably was some wasted space here on the table that you know, ideally I would not have liked to have wasted because I could have fit all of our flats here and I probably could have even up potted my onions that could use it, but I just don't have the space so I'm not because they'll be fine but I could have theoretically outpotted those as well and had tons of space. But uh, you know, it was just, hey, it was just a, an oversight on my part. I should have bought the compatible trays with what I was doing when I bought the four inch pots, but I was using what I had on hand. Um, I, had these over, I had these left over from years past, so I figured, you know what, I'm not gonna buy something that I don't need. And I ended up kind of kicking myself in the butt for that because now they just, it just looks sloppy in my opinion. But it's only for gonna be for like two weeks, so it won't be that big of a deal. But all you know, all in all, really happy with how things went, really looking good, we're off to a great start, definitely on par for an amazing year. Uh, in years past, I've had stuff this mature only about once or twice, and the garden was absolutely incredible when I had them this, when I had them this mature, because when they go out in the garden, they're ready to go, they're ready to grow, and they're just gonna do super well. So. Uh, I, I am excited. I am really, really excited. So I hope you guys are enjoying these series, uh, this ongoing series of getting our plants ready to go out in the garden. I really hope you're learning something from these videos. And if you are, make sure to let me know what you're learning in the comments box down below. And also make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. It really does help spread these videos around to more people. But as always, I hope you guys are having a great week. I'll see you all tomorrow on tomorrow's episode. And as always, grow bigger, go home. Hi.